Hey everybody and welcome to a controversial Wild Ride with Steve-O. I'm telling you this episode has more cans of worms than a Louisiana bait shop. Yeah, it's wild. It's crazy. And let me tell you too that I just got a new prescription. Like, I couldn't see, turns out. I needed a new prescription and it drives me nuts that I'm wearing the same pair of glasses for now three episodes in a row. I mean, I always loved changing it up. But you know what I love changing up even more than my glasses? My underwear, baby. These MeUndies, it's almost endless, the choices that you can have for this great underwear that feels so good when you wear it. Man, I'm telling you, I love MeUndies. And I've got a deal for you. It's satisfaction guaranteed. They say, if you don't like it, then you just give it back and you get a full refund or an exchange, but you'd be out of your mind to want to give these back, I'm telling you. And if you go to meundies.com slash stevo, then if it's your first order, 15% off, baby, and free shipping. So what are you wearing ugly, uncomfortable underwear for? Go to meundies.com slash stevo and enjoy 15% off of your first order and free shipping, plus endless choices of a great looking super comfortable underwear now let's get into bobby lee there's another guy scott yeah scott randolph yeah he's, he's my guy he's your sidekick yeah yeah he's, uh, he's on the podcast though yeah yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's using the loo oh the See, we, we got we got it all dude we got fucking we got oh the... fuck i didn't know this was gonna happen look at this guy's face <laughs> it's one of the best <laughs> one of the best in the business right here bro <laughs> look at that face bro yeah, dude. What's up, dude? You're sick, hey, huh? He, he is uh, pretty fucking hot. He's a hot dude right here, dude. What's up, dude? Dude, what's up, bro? What's up, Dog Pound? Fuck yeah, bro. We're gonna fuck or what, bro? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Wait, uh, I'm getting nervous, bro. Hey, um, it, let, let's get your mic a little lower so we don't obscure your beautiful face. My God, this is like. <sighs> okay, so it's I'm legit. I think Tiger Bell. When I think Tiger Bell, do, do you get you have headphones or no, you don't do headphones? No, right? we don't need it. All right. Do you want headphones? We can get you headphones. We can do. No, I don't know if we, we can. Got you if you want. That's all, right. that's all right. Okay. Uh, when I think of Tiger Belly, I think of pink. Is that fair? Pink. Yeah, pink. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, pick a color. Yellow. He said that's what it's all about. If you want yellow, pal, how's that? Hey, Tiger Bell is more yellow, bro. Oh, Tiger Bell is... Not because we're Asian, but... That's why he's wearing a yellow beanie. Fuck it, yeah, dude. Because Tiger Bell, merch. Dude. So you and I have a connection, huh? I know. <laughs> For real, huh? It is. All right. Where oh are you God. from, bro? <laughs> dude, me and this dude right here have a connection, bro. Yeah, that's Scott Randolph, man. Dude, yeah, you... no, you said that before, bro. And that's Paul Brisky. Paul Brisky. And here we go. What's up, Bobby? Dude, it's like a... You got like a... Car... Please don't do that, bro. <laughs> well, we're going to get there. He's like a Carney Methy kind of yeah. a guy, right? I like <laughs> Carney Methy. You know what I mean? Like when you go to the right. fair. Are we rolling I, on all here, cameras? Here we yeah, go, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. sure are. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Lee. It's good. What's yeah, up, bro? Dude. It's been yeah. a, it, dude, it, this, this is a long time coming, huh? It is. I flaked a couple of times. We, we, we have flaked on you flaked each a couple, other. A couple, you flaked a, I think a couple I flaked times. first. It's a real flake fest. It wasn't that I flaked as much as I just... Uh, Didn't respond? wasn't that I didn't respond. I'm very good at responding. This is the culprit when it comes to not responding. I'm the captain of it. <laughs> yeah. bro, I bet you money, when you were younger, bro, you were some hot shit, huh? Me? I yeah, Scott Randolph. I still am hot shit. <laughs> no, but you thickened and you're a little older. Yeah. Still good. Still legit. Like, if you were in the grocery store, we wouldn't take you off the fucking shelves. It's still like... I'm a staple. Exactly, bro. Yeah. But... I'm like curious. But, but, <laughs> but you were fu more fuckable 20 years ago. 20? 15? 5. <laughs> okay, 5. Let's five, go 5. Yeah. yeah. I All mean, right. dude, if we're really going to attack Scott Randolph like I'm this. I'm not attacking him. I'm giving him compliments. Right. Okay. Back, back of the candid. past. Of the past. Like, if I was a food dude, like, I wouldn't be on the shelving. You'd have to ask the person that works there, and then they'd have to go in the back to get me. Dude, you like, you, like, man, this I'm a specialty. This compliment is like if I'm going through the TSA at the airport and the guy says, oh, man, like, where you been, dude? I haven't seen you in anything forever. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens, dude. And I'm like, dude, I'm very active, just on, like, YouTube. I know. <laughs> I, I fucking hate it. It hurts your... 
And because we're alcoholics, yeah, you're a recovering alcoholic. We se we're sensitive to that. Right. Well, he is too. He's so I start yeah. thinking about it, like on the plane. Like if that happened to me at the LAX, right. I'd be on the plane thinking about but it. But is that not the backhanded compliment that you just gave Scott? I'm right like, off? I'm like, I'm a model, and you're like, what a hand model? <laughs> no, I, I, the model citizen. <laughs> Stop, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I like that. No, what I was doing is, is like, you know. Jo like you remind me of a Josh Brolin type. Yeah. Now okay. or then? No. So Josh Brolin now. Goonies or Sicario? That's what I'm saying, right? So I'm saying, when he was in Goonies, he was too young. Well, no. How about Thrashing? Thrashing. He thrashing. was in a movie called Thrashing. How old was he then? Oh my God! Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so Brolin now is a little bit more rugged. You know what right. I mean? Like I feel yeah. rugged. I like rugged. Right. Right. If I was in yeah. bed with him, I'd feel his scruff against my yeah. belly. You have this facial scruff against my belly, like scraping my shit, right? Yeah. You're like, is, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Carney. <laughs> yeah, that's so mean. I love you, bro. Yeah, oh, thanks, dude. Because you have like a Midwestern skateboarding type of vibe. I'm from the Midwest. And do you skateboard? Uh, I used to, but I broke my wrist, my wrist, and I stopped. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Skateboarding stuff. Anyway, I wasn't hit on you, bro. No, just, it's all good. Know, it's just we. You, you don't remember <laughs> playing ping pong at Steve's house back in the day? Oh, that's right. I played you in ping pong. Yeah. Did I win? No. But you're better than I am. <laughs> but you for sure lost. Dude, I remember that night very, very well. I asked you, Bobby, to come over and give me notes on my com comedy act like five days before taping the special. That was ridiculous. With uh, you, Ian yeah, Edwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you were, you were like, why did you get us over here like five days before taping the special? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, it was what? just like, uh, it's almost too late. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it felt. You were like, we can give you notes, but what's did you do that in high school? Did you like, cram? if you had a if you had a test <laughs> that night, like midnight, you started cramming? I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I never went to school really myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I was a really bad student. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you grow up? In San Diego, bro. Oh, really? Yeah. Where you from, bro? Pasadena. Fuck yeah, dude. Do you um? <laughs> dude, you, yeah. you know my brother. What's your brother's name? Stephen Randolph and Chelsea. Wait, Stephen Randolph's your brother? Yeah. Your real brother? Uh-huh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because Stephen, yeah, that's right. You are him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I, now I get that. I get it. I know the vibe. Maybe that's the connection. There's a connection there. You also look like him, like vi his vibe. Right? Well, dude, here's the thing. Stephen Randolph is Scott's older brother and would, like, physically abuse him. Like, traumatically <laughs> abuse him. Jesus, dude. Be because... <laughs> Because he was such hot shit. Like, like Stephen Randolph was so not as attractive as Scott. Scott got all the attention, and so Stephen Randolph took it out on him physically, violently. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that, because Stephen Randolph... Um, he's a physically violent guy. He also, <laughs> no, he's physically no, violent. dude, he's not like that. Yeah, yeah, but he's like a standard white. His face, he's uh -huh. like, you know, he works at, like, he looks like he works at Enterprise. <laughs> rental or you know what I mean you know what I mean or like yeah. he's the manager at Home Depot right you have more of a like you know 70s porn vibe Josh Brolin Josh Brolin yeah yeah, yeah I Magnum like that PI, dude. Magnum PI Magnum PI vibe dude yeah you like that yeah I don't no <laughs> no I don't like it <laughs> but how's your girl dude my girl's good man you guys are st married we're going, we're going strong we have not gotten married yet yeah yeah because i'm so proud of you i, I wear i wear a, a a ring out of respect yeah because i think it's ridiculous that the woman should indicate she's taken and not the man what does that say about our society right like only the woman should wear a ring to indicate that she's taken does that mean that it's assumed the men should continue to to fornicate with others yeah you probably get hit on a lot too well, that's the other the, the 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 flip side of it is that the wearing the ring, it's yeah. like chum for sharks. <laughs> right, right. You're chum in the water. Also, you you're saying that the ring makes them even more crazy. I mean, I don't know. I don't care because I because yeah. I'm uh, I remember having a conversation with you at uh, what's that Earth Bar? We were there to get our healthy juices. Oh yeah. Bumped into each other, and I was telling you about uh, how I'd had trouble with relationships and oh how I was uh, seeking sexual sobriety. Yeah, you, you, you. Actually, can I just? I want to be completely honest with you, bro. Go for it, man. Yeah. Out of all the human beings I've ever met on planet Earth, and I'm, I'm almost fifty. In two weeks, I'll be fifty years old, and you are the most, one of the most fascinating people I've ever encountered in my life. I'll tell you why, because I've never seen a human being go through such a transformation than you. 
it's like you're the poster child of like that like 12 steps work and you know what i mean and all that stuff works because it's like when i first met you bro i thought you were like a human scab yeah I, I, yeah yeah you were sure. like just a this thing where mark. we you know like he would walk in the room and we kind of you know kind of you know oh you know like what the <laughs> fuck yeah you know what i mean and it's like it was the first time we met uh when i got kicked out of that uh video game <laughs> awards was it a video game awards oh boy i don't look cool in this story because you know what i really was a scab and i stunk too but i don't stink anymore man because i use the best deodorant there is it's called native not only do i use it my girl lux uses it too when I came home with this stuff, we both decided we like coconut and vanilla the best. And she says, no, that's mine. You're not allowed to use it. I'm like, whoa, okay. Good thing I love the eucalyptus mint every bit as much. I mean, there's 10 different scents and they're all amazing. They all work incredibly well. And they're all only made from quality ingredients that you can actually pronounce in which you know what they are, like coconut oil or shea butter. And like I said, it is effective, it works, and it leaves you smelling fantastic. So now, how are you going to get a killer deal? Glad you asked. You go to native D E O dot com slash stevo or just use the promo code stevo at native deo dot com up to you man either way you're gonna get 20 percent off your first order and you're gonna get any number of these scents and you're gonna love them all man i'm telling you because i do so don't be a scab dude don't stink dude go to native deo dot com slash stevo and enjoy 20% off your first order. Yeah, dude. Smell great and feel good. Now let's talk about me being a scab. That was Samuel the crazy- L. Jackson. That was, was the there. craziest. Dude, I remember You had to show up to, to rehearse the show. You would well, just so run we're in Vegas, through. right? Yeah. It's the video games awards, right? Samuel L. Jackson's hosting and we're doing the rehearsal, right? First of all, I'm so I'm supposed to present with you. Anyway, we're co-presenters. Right. Well, we were. We were supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> that was right. the intention. Yeah, that was yeah. the intention, right? Uh, then all of a sudden, like you know, you you're a little late, so I'm already there at the where I'm supposed to be my mark. You come in, and you start screaming at Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you, you you go. What are you doing this for? <laughs> you're a sellout. You're a movie star, <laughs> right? Right. I, I'm being real. And like, I remember. What are you doing this for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember being uh, so in the audience was because there were other presenters in the audience. It was Pat Oswald and Brian Poussein. and I remember them looking at me. And Pat Oswald looks at me and he goes with his mouth, "I'm so sorry." <laughs> right. Next thing I know, they drag you out. <laughs> right, and then I, next thing I hear is that you're banned from the MGM oh, yeah. for life or something like that. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Okay. Something happened backstage. I don't know what happened, right? But that, like, that was like my first encounter with you. Yeah. What year would this have been? Ooh, yeah. uh, maybe 2007. Sounds about maybe, right. Maybe, yeah. And I remember I had to present by myself. <laughs> You know what I mean? So now the live show. Well, you got to present by yourself. I got to present my by myself, but yeah. I would have loved to do it with you. Well, yeah. But you were then, like out of your mind. That was the first time we met, and then the second time we met yeah. was at the this super high end, fancy massage place. It's called what, Burke Williams. Burke Williams, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and we I used were, to go to Burke Williams. I, mean, I don't think I was yet sober at that point no. either. But then to see <laughs> you go from there right to like vegan to like you know what i mean you know what i mean i'm not masturbating for next for a year 430 right? days yeah i'm you know what i mean i'm sober mm-hmm. i live a clean life and just being like this transformation that like just kind of blew my mind because you know when you get sober i still have like my things right like you know i i smoke oh you do yeah i you know i i still sometimes masturbate to porn like in in a very like you know, alcoholic way, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what? There are many different approaches to masturbating to porn. What do you mean? I mean, peop, there, there are people like, like Scott Randolph who would put, like... I went nine times in one day before. Why? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, how do you masturbate alcoholically? Well, it's like my, the, the motto that I was raised with. If a little's good, a lot's better. Yeah, but by the ninth time, your dick must have looked like a dog's dick, like, like, a, like a licorice. <laughs> 
Yeah, I wasn't too worried about that. Was it bleeding? No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. really remember too Did much from that Did anything come out when you like little visine drops came yeah. out after you came? And yeah. then, then there's then there's other people who <laughs> Tears. who just Tears, for yeah. like one for one orgasm will spend like ten hours. Like, that's when I that's what I do. Oh, uh, so you're like I'm about to come right, and then I'll just release right, and I will let it even go down. Yeah, so you're an, and it's called edging. Is that what it's called? It's called edging. You edging. get right to the edge, right. and then you back off. I back off. So 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 you actually put out. I mean, that's like such a time suck. Yeah, my penis goes, wee, oh, <laughs> and then it goes, wee, oh. I wonder if that's good for you. Like, I think it's that. I don't it, think it's good. It's Be- not good. There's nothing good about there's nothing masturbating. Good about- oh, your heart is racing. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. When I went to the therapist, he was like, do you masturbate like in two minutes or do you like take you 10 hours? And I was like, oh, like two minutes. And he's like, yeah, got it. And he wrote a note. But I'll tell you why <laughs> it's not good is because, you know, I went to uh, I went to a place because my when my dad died. You know what I mean? All this issue, all these issues came up because my dad used to beat the shit out of me growing up, and all this trauma came up, and I couldn't eat or sleep. I, I relapsed. I relapsed. You know, I have two years almost now, but a couple years ago I relapsed, and I um, I couldn't eat or sleep for months. I lost like forty pounds. I was on the. I was on. The, I was gonna kill myself, right? So then I went to a therapist, and we talked about my upbringing and the trauma so then i went to a place in arizona right so when i was in arizona i signed a contract because it's like they said you not only you know i got sober but they, they're they like um when you master the porn because i have trauma you have to understand that people that are in porn also went through trauma and it's just like a cycle of like um so this is the place in arizona the gentle path no i went to a place called p s c or something like that <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, um, you know when you—that's why I haven't been to strip clubs either because it's like it's right, just like yeah, these kids, yeah, these women are just you know I mean, they just had. Not, I'm not saying all of them, but like you know, a lot of them have gone through tremendous amounts of trauma and this and that. And it's just not a healthy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, but I still sometimes masturbate. When uh, this is so when when you had the relapse, it was just with weed. I got to say, there is a lot that I love about Bobby Lee, but the way that he's so open, so honest and candid and transparent, man, I respect that. He reminds me of my Whoop app, which openly, honestly tells me everything that is going on with my health and fitness, starting first thing in the morning by telling me what my recovery is and thus how I should approach my day. Now, I'm every bit as transparent as Bobby Lee is, so I don't mind telling you that I only got 37% recovery today. What does that mean? It means I might wanna kinda take it easy. It's not the time to go on a marathon right now. Maybe rest a little better, drink a little more water, and then just attack tomorrow. Yeah, that's important stuff to know, man. If you want to be in good health for a long time, you should have a Whoop band, which you get absolutely for free. And you can use this app, which gives you so much insight by going to whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P dot com. And when you get to whoop.com, you use the promo code Stevo, and that gives you 15% off at checkout. And you're off to the races, man, with all this insight into what's going on with your body, with your health, with your recovery, with your fitness. And man, it's the way to live a better life. So one more time, go to whoop.com, use the promo code Stevo for 15% off at checkout. Now let's talk about that relapse. Yeah, it was hard though, man, because it was like, well, the first week was great because I had 17 years of sobriety, right? Imagine 17 years. And then it's like when I got, when I was sober the last time, that's when the weed start stores, you would drive by the weed stores yeah. and go, well, what, what's that like? But then I was able to do it, right? And because I have a little money too, right? I, was at, I went to every weed store in LA and I would go to the high end place, like the high end section. To fuck with this, you know, Mexican weed. I want to go for, to the most expensive weed, and I bought everything. So I had like probably ten thousand dollars worth of weed stashed in my house, like literally in fucking black. You and know, and you're with your same girl the whole time. Yeah, but I hid it from her for about a month. I was able to hide it. You're wow. smoking it. You put or in? in. In the beginning, it was oils. 
that's when I was able to hide it. Oils, gummies, and those types of things. Drinks, because they sell drinks. Did you overdose, or not overdose, but did you like have like panic attacks from like eating too many gummies ever? I would. I had something, a medical thing that I'd never even went to the doctor about, but one time I was taking so many gummies that I froze in my living room where I couldn't, <laughs> I'm not kidding you, I couldn't move, and then my f body felt like I was in ice. Like I was frozen. And I couldn't move, and I was shaking, and because I, I was—I'm not being—I'm being. I'm being I, I had a similar experience one time when I drank aluminum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> what? Really? I swear I drank aluminum cleaner when someone told me it was like a way to get high. What is and, aluminum cleaner? And I was paralyzed on the the kitchen floor in this shitty little apartment I rented, and I, I couldn't even like reach my phone to call for help. And I, know. I was in this terrible. Position. Maybe the same thing happened, but like yeah. I, then I remember going to the bed, finally make it to the bed. And putting all the covers on and just shaking so then when then my girlfriend f i finally confessed that i relapsed and then she's like what are we gonna do like i can't live with somebody and i go well i'll go to this i'll go i'll, I'll go somewhere eventually but just give me a month wow so she let me smoke pot for a month in my house my new uh, at the time it was a new house so i just remember just like this is when i know i was an alcoholic and drug addict because i would wake up at like nine in the morning go in the backyard, smoke 9 a.m. to midnight. I wonder if it's... It was it's, great. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's it was not, great. I mean, Sounds great. I, I almost started saying, it's not offensive to ask this question, but go then ahead. I remember what you said to Scott Randolph when we started. So, <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead. Like, is it fair to say, like, you're, you're a girl... I'm is, a girl? No, no, you're, you're, you're a girl. Uh -huh. Like, is it fair to say that, like, how'd you get her? <laughs> How'd I get her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm picturing her no. saying, like, I can't be with someone, or I can't be with you if you relapse. And then it's like, when you say, that's how you know you're an alcoholic. I'm like, well, look, when, you're, when you're you and you're with her, and, like, this is a deal breaker for her, you, like, you'd think you would get sober in two seconds, no yeah, problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, I was willing. But at that also at the time, it was like, I saw death around the corner from yeah. me. And I was like, I'd rather, I, I want to die. I want, felt like dying. So Why, was, because of the past traumas coming because up? Because my dad died and like, I was just like lost and you know what I mean? I couldn't eat or say it was terrible. Even in fact, your brother. So I went on the road and your brother and his wife opened for me mm -hmm. in, yeah. in Portland. And this is how bad it got. They, they, they were the ones that first ratted me out. Good. So they were the ones that called my girlfriend and said, I think he's using. Because I was hiding it from them too, but they could tell because you know they're both sober. Yeah. yeah. So we went to this sushi restaurant, and I hadn't eaten in three days. I'm not kidding you. And I, you know what? I want to try to eat sushi. I ate half of. I vomited the sushi out. But weren't you smoking weed? Didn't that give it didn't, you the munchies? No, it doesn't because when you have the kind of trauma that I do, it, it, trauma affects the body, right? Like trauma, if you don't deal with it and release it, if you, especially if you had a difficult childhood. That shit turns into cancers and strokes and all kinds of stuff, right? And then you got to go through this process of relieving it through EMDR and some other techniques and stuff, right? But it's like, I um, no, I, it was weird. I could not eat. I couldn't sleep. I would be just, I would take six gummies, smoke, you know, and all that stuff. And I would lay in bed and I would just not sleep <coughs> all night. Just in my head, you know what I mean? And and the 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 thing that like... The main memory I had as a kid was um, when I was like eight years old, my brother Steve and I used to sleep in the same room. Mm -hmm. And I remember like it was four in the morning and my, the lights turn on in my, in my bedroom and my mom isn't in the room, right? And she's crying and she's, she's like panicking. And she goes, in Korean, she goes, help me, help, help me block the door, the door, you know? So me and my brother were kids, we're blocking the door. And I remember my, my, mom, my mom opened her mouth and her tooth was missing and she was bleeding. Like my dad had pun punched her in the face. And then we're like, my, I could hear my dad, you know, try to open the door. And my brother and, I, and my mom were just fucking clinging onto this door, and they finally got out. And I don't even remember what happened. That's not even in my memory. So probably something horrific happened, right? That I couldn't even, you know. Mm -hmm. But let's get. That's how and, and I was raised. 
was just a rageaholic that was mm-hmm. like, and I, you know, being a small, sensitive kid, you know, I resorted to drugs and alcohol and humor as a defense mechanism and also, you know, just not trying in school and acting out and all that stuff, right? That's the way I dealt with it. And it was a miracle that I found comedy because I honestly believe if there was, if I didn't do stand up when I was 23 years old, that something God, I mean, God awful would have happened, I think. I, I don't think I would have, I, I would have had a great life. You know, What's the age difference between you and your brother? Three years. That's the same as my brother. Is he younger or older? Younger. And he, he was also cuter <clears throat> than me. So he used to, in high school, I never got any pussy. You know, I was unfuckable. And um, I still think I'm unfuckable. But um, my brother always got girls. Mm-hmm. He was cuter, but I never beat him up. For it, like your brother did. <laughs> Fuck, that's fucked up. <laughs> You're fuck Steven, man. Yeah. No, dude. No, no, fuck your brother, yeah, man. I mean, you know yes. he's never gonna open for me again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. That's you said that's you outrageous, mad- bro. Yeah, Are yeah. you mad at him for ratting you yeah. out? What? Are you mad at him for ratting Two you out? Two things now. He beat the shit out of you, going <laughs> no, out, right? and he ratted me out this fuck. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, he, he he's I, one I of the best guys him. now. I, I still I still love him. <laughs> I still love Stephen Randolph, but he definitely beat him up yeah. because he was better looking. Yeah. Bro, and he <laughs> definitely ratted on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But can I say something about your brother? Yeah. <laughs> he is a talented guy. He's very he's, he's talented. A great guy he's a too. super talented guy. Dude, like, I love him. I do too. I, I, genuinely, I genuinely love he, Stephen Randolph. Yeah, you guys got to yeah. say something nice about him. Or he's yeah. going to be really upset. Well, I, I know he, cause he gets I, really he's going to beat me if you guys don't say something <laughs> nice about him. No, but, <laughs> I mean, dude, he, like when you were little kids. Were kids. Yeah, I know, dude. We, we, we got over it. You know, yeah, you, we were, both, you were little we both kids. Were, <clears throat> he, he, he had a natural reaction to being jealous of your, of your better looks. He's a little kid, you know, like there's nothing there. And, and, and he cared about Bobby. You know, like, what is he supposed to keep secrets and then Bobby's dead? And then what is he supposed to think? Like, when it comes to addiction and alcoholism, you have to rat on people. Otherwise, they're going to end up dead and it's going to be your fault. So in both yeah. cases, he did the right thing. I think he did. <laughs> I don't think that if he was sober, he would have done the right thing. Because he's a sober guy, he did mm-hmm. the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And um, your brother has is very much <clears throat> like me. Because when he stresses out, I relate to his stress. Like, sometimes... When he used to work at the comedy store, I would see him just like have his hands on his head and he'd just be like, <laughs> you know what I mean, stressed out about some deal or, you know what I mean, some yeah. opportunity yeah. that's like, you know what I mean, going away. And he, he would just completely just get consumed by something. Yeah. And I'm like that. You know what I mean? So I relate to your brother in that way as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all are. are you like him? Depends on what, probably. Are you, are you sober? Yeah. I got eight years. Oh, congratulations. So you both, is this you two? <clears throat> Me and my sister. My sister's totally normal. Why, is she older? Middle. Middle. I'm three years younger. It's like uh, three years apart. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it skipped her. Mm-hmm. I, I heard, and I'm not going to say who I heard it from, but that, but that like when you're on tour. Talking that, to me? Yeah. That when Bobby Lee's on tour, that... <laughs> Despite the fact that you do so many shows on tour that you're like gripped with anxiety before you get on stage, like every single time. Yeah. That doesn't go away? No. no like, I, heard, like I heard like, um, and I thought was, I was something wrong with me, but then it's like, I heard Meryl Streep, not Meryl Streep, um, Barbara Streisand, before every show she vomits, like in a you know what I mean? Yeah. Point, you know what I mean? He gets so nervous. Dude, I'm not even a stand-up. Steve makes me open for him. I, I, <laughs> I, check, yeah. I check my heart rate before I go up. Yeah. It's 170. Yeah. It's, you know, I'll be honest with you. It's not something, and it's it, it's annoying what I do. I'll tell you why. Because, um, and Whitney Cummings, right, confronted me on it. Because one time I was at the comedy store and I was being really anxi- anxious, right? Pretending to be anxious, Right. And then I went up, I killed, and then afterwards, I go, it wasn't good. And she just pulled me aside and she goes, I'm done with this. She confronted me. She's like, it's a show. <clears throat> what you're doing is bullshit. It's like, you know, you're, we're not going to buy into this charade that you're, you know what I mean? Like, do you, do you know you do well I, and then you get off yeah, and you just want thing. validation? That's, so before, So before my set, I go through this thing that's so annoying where I don't really feel... And just, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to crush. I'm going to do well, right? 
but I go through the emotions like, you know, it's so, you know what I mean? Oh, the pressure and all this, all, all this stuff. And then afterwards, I could kill, it doesn't matter. Afterwards, I'll always go, oh, it wasn't that good. You know what I mean? And it's like, my openers will be like, did have to just deal with it, right? But someone like Whitney, you know what I mean, is my, le you know, she's even probably a bigger level than I am. And she's just like, um, stop. And so since she did that, I don't do it anymore. I don't go through the, that process because it's 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 annoying. Like, like, so I sit like I'm gonna show you. So I sit like this, right? Yeah. See the way I'm sitting? Cross leg. Yeah, but this is not my natural way of sitting. My natural way of sitting, oh fuck, is like <laughs> this, right? This is not it, right? But so, do you know this band, Hot Snakes? I don't know Hot Snakes. Because there was a band called Drive Like Jehu. Anyway, the lead singer, when I used to work at a coffee shop, right? This is before I did stand up. I worked at the Panic and Coffee Shop in La Jolla. One time I saw the lead singer, this is in the early 90s, Rick Farr, come to my coffee shop. He was wearing one shoe, the other shoe was missing, right? And I knew that he was the lead singer of one of my favorite bands, Drive Like Jehu, right? He was sitting there <laughs> like this, drinking a coffee, right, like this. And I remember practicing to sit like him. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's not my natural way, right? Like forcing my little legs to like do this, you know what I mean? And then like just act, act kind of like an artist almost. This is so gross what I'm saying, right? And so it's like from then on, like I just pretend to be this thing, like this ar artist guy. This is so annoying that I'm what I, 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 because I'm, in, I'm I want to change, right? So I think it all stems from Rick Farr. <laughs> this guy. This guy. You know what I mean? Man, I'm still thrown off by that crazy slur you just used. Which one? Uh, the G word on yourself. Yeah. My little G legs. G bunny legs? What'd I say? <laughs> we can't say I, it. I can't. <laughs> we, can't we can't. We can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, what did he say? What did I say? Paul, what did he say? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> what I heard it. You remember it. Well, okay, so I said Okay. That, that, I mean, that's, that, that's probably going to demonetize this whole podcast, right? That one word. You think so? It's a heavy can word. You, can you, you beep so? it? Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah. Well, I think we, 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 we can beep it. Yeah, we can beep it. That was a heavy word. Yeah, beep it. But you so, guys, do you guys beep it, it on Tiger tomorrow. Belly? You say it on Tiger Belly all the time. Do you ever get in trouble for that on YouTube? Well, I, I think that if a black guy says the N word, it's okay, right? right. But, okay, well, would you get demonetized? We, man, we man said the M word, and uh, that was a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that as an Asian person, I can say the G word. Yeah. Why no, 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 no. We meant the M. M. M word. <laughs> oh, the M word. Which is what? Yeah, let's clarify. We meant. Oh, so, said wait, 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 wait. Oh, I see what you said. I see. So, we <laughs> meant said. We meant said. Oh, so, we meant said. Idget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the M. Yeah. You said idget with the M, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, can you say that? Like, can you say ook with a G? It's fine, right? It's fine. I'm going to see if I can do the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can. No, no, I, can't, no, I, won't, no. I won't. I won't. I won't. Yes. Right, but I'm just saying that. Um, so he said idiot, right? Yeah. But he is an idiot. So why can't he say that? Right. That was, and that was actually the point he was making while he said it. He was telling a story right. about it getting cut out of Jackass 2 when he was the one who said it. And he was like, right. I'm the one who said it. Oh, God, and, it got and, cut and, out. And it got our, but I remember, I mean, who cares? But, but yeah, it was. Yeah, it, you know, it's, um, I'm going to say something and I, I want to be. It's a sensitive time. Yeah, it's not only a sensitive time, but um, I have to, I think when it comes to comedy, Right. This is. The, uh, I think it, we're going to be in a very scary territory if we start completely editing everything that we're saying. You know what I mean? When Especially it comes to comedy, in comedy. In comedy, and I and I um, I struggle with it because it's like you know, everything that I say on podcasts and radio shows and stuff are number one pretty much lies. Number two, <laughs> they are pretty much lies, exaggerated stories. I'm wild. I say wild things, you know, and, um, you know, that's always been since after Mad TV, I was always kind of like of a shock, kind of a shock comic, you know what I mean? Saying crazy uh, things and stuff like that. And showing your wiener. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, I mean, not show the actual wiener, but I would go dance in my underwear or whatever. Yeah. Right. 
and be provocative in that way. And I just, well, you know, it's, there's a freedom to that. I live in America, you know what I mean? I am a, this little Asian guy, you know what I mean? And I want to, you know what I mean? I want to express myself, you know? And um, we're just in a really scary time, man, because it's like, you know, we have to watch everything that we say, stuff that I've said before, like 20 years ago, or coming back <coughs> around, and people are going, well, you said have, this. Have you gotten in trouble for old, I have, old yeah. stuff? I, I, I don't want to talk about it, but I have, right. you know what I mean? And it's like, those things that I'm in trouble for are complete and utter lies and exaggeration. They're jokes, and, you know, they... And I feel bad, I guess. I, You know I mean? There's a part of me that feels bad, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like my core being is I've never really done anything to harm anybody or, you know, I've done anything. I've mm -hmm. always been sober guy. I've always been, you know, yeah. my little brief moments of relapse, but it's like I... um I know that, that sounds like your relapse looks more like you in fetal position than out there being hateful. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I never. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go to the, even to a comedy club and smoke pot with the comics. I would be just in my house. I'm like that kind of alcoholic. Or You're not I, yelling at Samuel L. Jackson at the MTV <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but do you, when that happened, though, I've always wanted to wonder, when you're, when you're there at that event... And you're getting kicked out. What are you thinking? Um, it's so it, funny because it, your perspective was probably like, dude, I went and showed up and like, dude, they, they didn't need me and I just left. Cool. Well, I mean, I think there was a there was a, a level of embarrassment that I had yet to be clear. But it, the overwhelming sense was that, oh, cool. Now I don't have to even worry about doing this show. I can go straight to the to wherever I can find cocaine. Oh, uh, you, know, right, you right, remember right. that that's that scene? Oh, I I totally remember that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, it was just like, okay, cool, man. I don't have to wait to like really let my hair down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though it was pretty well down already, yeah, exactly. I remember like I remember there like it, what's most shocking about that day was that I made it through the airport and 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 was allowed on an airplane and then like. It, because I was screaming, and I was screaming and, and going through the airport. Oh my god! I forget oh what my, my deal was that I was screaming, but uh, yeah, I was. I was. I was, was that was before bad. or after the smoking on the airplane? Ah, uh, the smoking on the airplane was ages ago. Ooh, that was, you smoke, you lit a cigarette on the airplane. Yeah, see, my philosophy was <laughs> that <laughs> that whenever you get on the airplane, they say this is a non-smoking flight, and. Federal law prohibits tampering with the smoke detector in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. They don't say federal law prohibits smoking. It says it's a non-smoking <laughs> flight, and you can't tamper. They never actually, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so it's so federal law does not prohibit me from tampering with the cigarette in my seat. <laughs> it's like I didn't go in the bathroom. Right. I didn't even. I didn't even. That's it. I didn't even go in the bathroom to tamper, <laughs> you know, to yeah. tamper with the smoke detector because I'm a good guy. Yeah, I yeah. stayed in my seat Lawful. and tampered with the cigarette. Wow. And so give me the misdemeanor because I already know it's not a federal offense. What happened? Yeah, you got how'd that work? Well, yeah. it turned out that it is a federal, a, a federal offense to. Uh, to disregard the uh, instructions of a flight attendant. Yeah. And um, and 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 then he said, "I need you to put that cigarette out." Yeah. And so I I, I stepped, I, I jammed it into my wrist and and twisted it around and and uh, burned burned uh, my wrist and then and then I lit, lit up another one after he walked oh, away. No. Yeah. And then he came back. He said, "Come on, man. Please, ask me, please. Really nice, please." Yeah, yeah. And and then the, and then uh, that was when I started hurling slurs at him. <laughs> Were you in the air? <laughs> Were you in the air at this point? I, I, um, yeah, it was in the, in the air. We found the footage recently. I watched it, and you're also like, "This is gonna be great. Wait, just wait. Watch. Uh, just really? watch." Like. Like so, he was gonna be amazed once you lit it, and like so. He did would people love it. come on board to take you out, or you? you, you no, no, we were, we were already in the air. Uh, yeah, yeah. When the plane landed, yeah. The uh, the the law enforcement um, people came on. The, everyone to stay in their seat, and they extracted me first. <laughs> you got yeah. priority deboarding. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where, yeah. Where were you priority, going? Priority priority deboarding. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to spring break, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. North Panama City. Oh, wow. From where? L.A.? 
yeah, I think probably from L.A. So then he's had to what? smell I, smoke for five hours the whole way there in the plane. Well, I mean, no, but I, if I recall correctly, we, we connected in, in Atlanta, meaning it was a Delta flight. Shit. You yeah. do have what I have, which is like, um, and I don't have it as a sober guy, but sometimes I have this thing where it's like the rules don't apply to me. You know what I mean? Like driving rules or just different rules. I have this thing where it's like, it just, you know, like if I get a parking ticket on my, in my car, right, I'll literally just keep it there until the natural winds blow it away. Wow, it's crazy. I don't pay it. And then what happens? <laughs> what? It just, I, I deal with the consequences later. You mean, whereas I, like my car will get towed. So, or, so you get a ticket on your car. What goes on in your head? Like, fuck these people. I don't even think about it. <laughs> I just keep it there. I've had two of them on there before. I want to clarify that I did not hurl. Even back then, this was 2004. I did not hurl <laughs> racial slurs. At the <laughs> still right. about it. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I was, I was just like, uh, I mean, that doesn't even really help. But <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I was back then. I, it was like uh, to me, if I wanted to be insulting towards someone, yeah. I, I, w- I would say agate. Oh. <laughs> Is it agate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if that guy, I'm not, who knows? Yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was just general, I was just trying to be generally like uh, derogatory, you know? It didn't even have anything to do with with, that, with I, anything you know, about the guy. I miss sure. white people. I, like, what happened to you guys? What happened to us? <laughs> white people have become so sensitive and like, I miss old white people. Like Asian, like, like I like like, like like Grand Torino. Clint yeah, Eastwood. like I like I li- you know I grew up I grew up with such a hostile like racism. What about uh, even what about that story I saw on TMZ about Tony Hinchcliffe? Didn't you speak up about it like at the time? So uh, so what? When you mean the opener? Yeah. When is when he called the opener? Yeah. yeah. Or whatever. So, so, so something like in and out. To be fair. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, okay? And I, Asians are gonna be so mad at me for this, but the, like one time, this gay comic brought me up on stage. <laughs> He's a friend of mine, right? So I called it. I, I go one more time for the agate, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and he goes, "Fuck you, you, you know me, you flat faced." Was you he pissed mean? or was he? No, not we're, care. we're doing. Comedy, you know what I mean? You fucking fat or whatever, and then I'm like, fuck you, you know what I mean? And we're like, <laughs> we're killing, right? Like the audience is by eating it up. It's like a rapport that we have, <clears throat> right? It's like, you know, um, we have the relationship. This kid is his opener, right? And it's like the things that I've said about my openers have been crazy, you know what I mean? Like insane, right? But it's like they were. It was never taped, right? And I think that um, it's Tony's audience, right? He asked this kid to open for him, right? There's a rapport that there's sort of like this unsaid rule that like, you know, in in that environment, it's safe to fucking make fun of each other, this and that. And I understood kind of what Tony was doing, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, would he do it to me? No, because if he did, I would do it back to him, right? Like, I, I, I could have said 10 things that would have made him cry because I just know personal things about him. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, to me, when I saw that, at first I was like, oh, that's kind of fucked up, right? But then when I actually thought about it, I was just like, it's, it's a... It, were you, yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of... Tony Hinchcliffe is a, is a master comic. He's a I good mean, comic. General, he's a good he's writer. He's really, really good. Yeah. And he's got that kind of sort of like dry, like, you know, like almost like Jezelnik. Almost yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like we're like offensive, yeah, like yeah, dry, yeah. offensive. And so it, it wasn't like too far out of his style of comedy. You know, it was a little bit on the nose, like not, not, not as. Uh, it's provocative. It's edgy. People laughed nervously. You know what I mean? But it's like. It's also kind of like I could see in the moment. It was like I'm punk rock. You know what I mean? I'm I'm edgy. You know what I mean? This is yeah. against c- the culture right now. You know, and it's like you know I understand all that. But you know, is Tony Hinchcliffe in his heart a racist? No. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Was yeah. he just <clears throat> doing his brand yeah. of comedy? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that... Um, I agree. I do. I, I mean, I really do. And it being an... Like, there was that other kid. I forgot his name. Shane Gillis. Yeah. Uh, the Saturday Night Live uh, yeah, guy right, got, right? got fired from Saturday Night Live. Got fired from... We're gonna I guess as soon as he got hired. Huh? He didn't even get to do a show. No. He got hired, and then he didn't even do a show yet. And then I'm having fired. him on Tiger Belly in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just another thing. It's like, he said it on a podcast... Right, and as a comedian, I think anything goes for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you say crazy things. I've, I've said so many crazy things, right? And it's like, some of them aren't cool. You know what I mean? With today's culture and today's, you know, how the, it shifted, you know? It shifted on us, the world, you know? And it's like, um, <clears throat> I know, I was just like, you know, also as an Asian guy, at first when I saw it, I was a little offended. Like Tony's, and you're yeah. my first initial reaction. But I have to think about, you know what I mean, who he is, what the environment is, you know what I mean, and um, what his heart says. You know. Did you shoot him a text? No, at the in the beginning, no, because I don't know him. You mean Shane Gillis? No, no, no. Tony. Tony. No, I never texted him <clears throat> because um. I thought I didn't think it was that big of a deal until later. Yeah, and, I don't know. And he he has moved on. He survived it. It wasn't like anything. Like uh, yeah. What about Ari Shafir? Like what's going on with him lately? What do you mean? I remember when he like did his his Kobe joke. Mm -hmm. That was not good for him. And and, and I wonder. It, it, that's it, a, that's another example of what I'm going to say is is that he's on brand. Yeah. And um. I thought I personally thought it was poor timing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I personally thought that it was um, just unsavory. It's not not cool. Right. You know I mean it, it, can, can it's I also you, you got to leave some time. He well, didn't do that. He what? did it immediately. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it was and, just all off putting. And it wasn't. Yeah. It was. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. But still, at the end of the day, it's like he's doing what he does. That's right. his style, right? And it's like, if you don't like it, don't follow him. Yeah. Right. I found out Kobe died from Ari's post. <laughs> <laughs> that just got just yeah, kidding. That, that's funny. <laughs> you know, I found out about 9-11 the day at 9-12. Yeah, I found out about it oh, at 4 yeah. p.m. that day. 9-11, I was sick. You loaded. What? You weren't loaded? No, no, no. I was super oh. sick, and I just didn't pick up the phone. I just slept all day. Yeah, wow. same. And the next day, I went to a Starbucks, and it, it, it felt weird in there. Right, and then I looked. You know, at Starbucks, you has like newspapers, and I just saw the twin towers exploding. Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah. And then I, was, I, I remember picking it up, going, "What the fuck?" Right, and it's like, I was just a day late. It was weird. Man, can I tell you the, the the one of my favorite jokes, and it was on Twitter, and it was about someone being dead the day that they died. Like, no time was... Yeah. It was so fucking funny. Who was it? Okay. I don't know the name of the person, but it was on TMZ. That I, and I get my news from TMZ. And the story was that a magician committed suicide by hanging themselves in a closet at the, the Magic Castle. Right. So they were found dead. And, and, and Jeff Ross copied the link to this TMZ article right and tweeted it with one word what he wrote abracadaver <laughs> abracadaver that's Abra really funny yeah, yeah that is so fucking funny it's very funny did <laughs> you get in trouble for it no yeah yeah I, I mean this was a long time ago this was uh but let me go back to Ari Ari is um he, he's in New York and it feel, I feel like he's doing all the clubs and he's, everything's fine. Hmm. Another thing we have to also understand is just, you know what I mean, the news cycles, it shifts so quickly, right? 24 hours. 24 hours. And even with just com in, with comedians and, and stuff, it's like it shifts. So he, what he did is he went to Peru. I, I, he went somewhere for like six months after the Kobe stuff. And he, he went to Thailand. I, he went all over the world and traveled and hiked you know and he came back and um it seems like it it died when he got, got back so now he's just doing his own thing i i don't really read anything about ari you know yeah. but can we talk about kate quigley 
Sure. <laughs> Do you know who she is? I, I'm not sure. Uh, Do you know who she is? Kate, is this funny, Kate? Yeah. Well, I saw a red band post saying, hey, give her some love. You don't right, know what so, happened? So, no. Yeah, so she was in this overdose party. Was yeah. it in Venice? Yeah, dude, this is gnarly. I never, I don't know about this at all. What happened? I so Kate Quigley, right, is a very funny comedian girl. Um, I used to hang out with her. She's a nice girl. And she was, I guess, at a party with three other guys. In Venice, yeah. In Venice, and they snorted some cocaine that was laced with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. I just saw the headline the yesterday. The three guys died. Shit. And she was in the ICU this weekend, but it looks like she's going to make it. Oh, but it's her, like that? What do you mean? She was like... We thought that her organs were going to shut down, and she was in a coma, and she was going to die. You know what I mean? But now, now in this situation, do they know that the cocaine is it like is that like a perk? It's like, oh, dude, I got some killer coke and it's got fentanyl. No, I think they just. I think some cocaine has just has fentanyl cut into it. I don't know. I, it's not my drug. You know what I mean? It's not my scene. And also, I'm sober, so I don't know much about it. I mean, that's the real. Or when I relapsed two years ago, was just like I'm not doing opiates. I'm not doing these things because it's like, I still had obligations i still had a career to somehow figure out you know what i mean i was on a show at the time so i was just like you know i, I just weed my gut just said just stick with the weed you know what i mean because it's yeah jesus dude is weed any different now and then is it obviously way fucking stronger well, i didn't now? smoke for i didn't I hadn't smoked weed at that time for 17 years so even probably like the worst kind of weed possible you know that you could get from mexico or whatever yeah would have been you know what I mean? Insane. But for me, I went to like the high end shit, you know, with the the purple little, you know what I mean? Little uh, hairs on it, you know yeah. what I mean? And I just remember getting so high. Like, I went to Hawaii to shoot Magnum and I was high and I had a day off and I had done some weed and I was just like walking down the street and just crying, laughing about I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but I just remember, like, I had to pull my side, right? And by I was, yourself? like, by myself, like a sad <laughs> guy, you know what I mean? And just, <laughs> ah, you know, laughing so fucking much, right? But then, like, after a couple of months of doing it, you it just becomes super, and you know in your heart, you just go, this is not going to end well. This is not the life I want to live. I want to live... Um, I want to live in the light. You know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah. So what's 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 new for you? You turn 50, you're going to get married. Had, yeah, I mean this last year has been the best of my career. It's yeah. been insane. I did a movie in um Hungary with Kate Blanchett. Wow. Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, Edgar Ramirez, Janina Gavankar. I mean Gavankar. I mean I and I was there for 2 months. You know what I mean, I did Reservation Dogs, and then I'm on Sex in the City, the new Sex in the City, and then I'm also I've done four episodes of that, and then I sold the show to ABC, wow. and then I have one more, and then I have oh Magnum <laughs> PI, I'm doing Magnum PI again. You know what I mean? Three episodes this season, and um, it's just been incredible. And it's like this is a I'm t like ten years ago, I could get nothing. I couldn't get my agents to call me back. I couldn't get an audition. I couldn't get anything. Weren't you on Curb? Yeah, but like they'll be, I would do Curb, and, and then, then two years will go by, and nothing. You know, and this time, I think two things happened. Number one, um, my podcasting, right? It completely helped me because it's like every job that I've gotten from the movie to everything were because producers or somebody was a Tiger Belly fan or a Bad Friends fan, right? And number two, um, no, just that. I, I, I just sobriety had nothing to do with it? No. No. I don't know. But it's just like, it, it just kind of all caught up, you know what I mean? And it just feels completely different. And I, I don't know what happened, but... Um, Am I happy? I can't, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. Are you gonna stay in LA for a while? Yeah, for, forever. Forever. For, forever. I'm an LA guy forever. Are you? 
I love LA. I love LA too. It is everything that I need. Those fucking idiots that moved to Texas. <laughs> those fucking morons. Some of them are coming back. Tim mm-hmm. Dillon, I saw him the other night. He's like, I'm moving back October 1st. It's like, no shit. Yeah, I saw that on the Joey Diaz podcast. Yeah. They're going to come back. But yeah, there's nothing out there. I mean, it's going to be fun <laughs> for three years. Yeah, LA's the best. Yeah, it is. You could have the, it has the best food if you, could, you know where to go, right? It's got, you know, the beaches. The right? best weather. The best weather. You don't have to fucking scrape ice off your windshield to go to work in the morning. Y- yeah. It's a little, it's expensive. I get it. But it's like, um, but also LA has the thing that. The weed. No, that's just weed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But they have, just by living here, magic can happen. I'll give you an example. <laughs> I was what are you going to do, dude? <laughs> nothing. I, was, I just need to adjust my body. I was in a, one time I was in Koreatown. I was at a Korean restaurant called Sukbulji. And um, I was just eating with my girlfriend. And this Korean girl guy comes up to me. <laughs> <Is right>? this- <laughs> what? What did you say? The Korean guy came up to me. Okay. Wait, what did you think I said? <laughs> <laughs> I heard something. Uh, no, no, a Korean guy came up to okay. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he goes, uh, hey, dude. I go, I'm eating. I'm like, what's up? Hey, I like the comedy. <laughs> right, right? It sounded Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I like you know. I like your comedy. I go, thank you. And he goes, I direct her. And I go, oh, cool, right? Because you want to do music videos? I go, I love music videos. And I don't know what it was, but it's like, I gave him my number. So a week later, the dude texted me, tomorrow, music video. If he got a response from you, I'm going to be livid. <laughs> what? Yeah, did you respond right away? No. <laughs> no, I did. Because I, he, he go, he, I think he texted me. I have a music video, right? He, and he said two words, Eminem, and he goes, Dr. Dre. And I go, what? So he gave me the address, I show up. Next thing I know, I'm in a fucking van, right? Like a bus with Dr. Dre and Marshall, you know, Eminem, and I'm do- doing one of their music videos, <laughs> right? So you're in- uh... One of the videos, it's called, um, we made you. I think the song is called. Is it out yet? It was out. This is years ago. This happened. This is back back in the day, and like, those are so many things like that happen where I'm like, somewhere, right? And somebody goes, hey, you know what I mean? This is in L.A. You know what I mean? I'm doing something. Like I was, back in the day when I, you know. So so what was the situation? You were eating, and this guy worked at the restaurant. No, he was or... just a guy that was eating there. Uh, okay, gotcha. he just walked right up to me, and he goes, you know what I mean? Music video. That's basically all he said. And he was the director <laughs> of this fucking Eminem video. It was crazy. And he knew you from the podcast? No, he, no, this is way before the podcast. He knew me from Mad TV or whatever. Wow. Right? But I'm just saying that, like, things like that happen where you're just kind of like... Yeah. I was at a Kodak store because I had to... One, back in the day when you had to... Dis, this is years ago. Um, you'd have to take these disposable cameras, right? And then I would use 12 of them. And then in six months, I would go to a Kodak store to get them developed. I was waiting in line in the one in Beverly Center, and Seth Rogen was behind me in line. And he goes, I saw you at the Laugh Factory. Can you be in my movie, Pineapple Express? <laughs> and I go, all right. You know what I mean? Like, just like little things that happen just by being here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't want to move to Austin because that shit like right. that, that doesn't happen. Like, I can do stand up here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You become a very good stand-up, by the way. Thanks, bro. And I, I want to say that rarely do I see somebody that you know comes. You know, it, you know, I'm an I'm a organic stand-up. I, w- I started it started with it at when I was 23, open mics. I did the whole thing, and so it's like when I see like an actor, or you know, what I mean, an ent- entertainer like, entertainer like yourself, decide to do stand-up later in their career, or whatever. They, I have to be honest, there is like a gut like reaction of like, come on, you know what I mean? What the fuck? You know what I mean? But so it, it takes a while for me to go to watch somebody and go, you know what? Theo did it because Theo was Theo Vaughn was, you know, 
he house was, rules yeah Brand he was rules. on some mtv show yeah. right and then he started doing stand-up and we were kind of like why is this guy doing? and then he became you're very much like that where it's like a guy that you know you're from jackass and it's like you did it and you put in the work that's the thing it's like it's hard you know how hard it is stand up and when you're one of those guys that like is you're an actor and you do it once in a while right to make a quick buck or whatever right it just doesn't um sit well with me but when somebody goes you know i know that this is a completely different craft and i'm going to put in the fucking work then i can gain a respect because i'm sure you had some suffering when you started bit. doing stand-up you For know sure. I mean? how hard it was yeah yeah uh, and it, it, i also um was fortunate that i didn't realize how bad it was i was eating shit but i didn't really know that <laughs> you know? yeah 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 i just took the last that i got and the last that i got really put wind in my sails right and kept me at it um and uh and and i also had when i when i started doing it um i i was uh i'd mixed in stunts like every like even if i did two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. I'm still doing all those stunts over and over and over and over again. Wow, wow, wow! And uh, and that kind of helped me along. But dude, thank you so much, man. I really do give be, because I remember even before you did it though, I would see you at the clubs in the audience. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, what I mean, you were doing your studying as well. Like, how uh -huh. do how does this work? You know, what I mean, that you know that mean? was when I got sober. I didn't, I'm not going to bars. I'm not going to nightclubs anymore. Like, the only place that I, I would go would be to the comedy club because I had a reason to be there. Yeah. But that in that way also, it's like, okay, he's trying to like learn the thing. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's cool. Yeah, I think Rappaport does it. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I like Jeremy his Jeremy Piven. I've Piven. heard good things about his stand-up. I like Piven as well. You know what I mean? He's putting the work in though. You know what I mean? He goes up a lot. Yeah. And when people go up, like, I just don't like it when like, you know... I don't want to name names, but there have been people that did it and they just decided just to go on the road. Like they did went up twice and all of a sudden because they have a name, they went on the road. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> what that ha what happens is then they s sell out a big club and they eat a dick and then they stop doing it because it's so brutal. Right. That's not what you did. You kind of slowly got there. I got on. The, I got to hitting the road pretty quickly, you know. I, I dove into it. I started doing it all, all the time, all the time, and uh, and then I was presented with the opportunity to get on the road when our Jackass 3D came out. Ah. Uh. So I so I got into it pretty pretty quickly. Wasn't it from a Howard Stern interview? Yeah, I went on Howard to promote Jackass 3D, and I was like, Howard, I'm doing stand up every night, and I love it, and I want to do it in New York tonight. And uh, I did it at the cellar that night. Yeah. How, how long did you do? <clears throat> like 10 minutes set at the cellar, like whatever. Was it hard? No, cellar can be a little intimidating. I mean, yeah, okay, it was. It's intimidating. It was. Even when I play the cellar, it's like, this is, you know, it's the comedy store of New York, I think. It's like, I right. got that deep history. Yeah. Everyone's a killer, mm -hmm. you know? I, but, uh, you know, but, but whatever it is, man, I always did take it seriously. I always did care about it and, and work hard. And and thank you, man. Is uh, what, you have a new Jackass coming out, right? Yeah, but they've just pushed the date from October to February. But you shot it already? Yeah. Is it good? It's fucking great. Nothing's ever gonna beat our second Jackass movie, but this smoked the third Jackass movie. Yeah, I can. I, I'll be honest with you. Can I? Um, you can say no, but I've always liked you guys. Huh. And. Is there some sort of, like, if you have a screening or something where I could get invited to and so I can meet some I wonder, I've always wanted to meet Johnny Knoxville. And, I did. I would love nah, to. Being real, I, I feel like. Two words. Music video. <laughs> really? What? I would assume that there will be one. Yeah. And I would love for you to. You're going to forget. I, I won't do it. He's going to do like it and you're it. not going to text back. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm fuck not. you yesterday <laughs> fuck you guys yesterday did you text me 
Yesterday, you didn't get back to me. The time before how fa- I went. How fast? How fast though? Pretty quick. Very quickly. So was that a changed man or what? It, 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 I was stoked. I, I was. I was. Like, I was really. And, stoked. and guess what? Who's here? Yeah. You are. Yeah. They, they, you know what? Like whenever, whenever. Right? I mean, you are here for whenever sure. Whenever I do, and, uh, and you're to the minute, right on time. Yeah. Whenever change man. Stop doing that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you don't like my wings? Yeah, I like it. Dude, I have this little habit when I record the intros for for my my podcast. It's yeah. called Wild Ride. Yeah. And in every episode, <laughs> I say I give I give each episode an adjective. Like the the last one I that I recorded, I said welcome to an exhilarating wild ride. Right. And I think that the the adjective for this episode, welcome to a controversial wild ride. Why? Because because I, I say ook. No, well, there's that. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, that guy. There's a, we 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 really talked about me getting beat. We really delved into a, Some a, great, dark ones. a great deal of scandals. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. A bunch of uh, uh, you know, we, we we peeled back the the curtain. Yeah, for, a little for bit. Scott's yeah. trauma. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of, yeah. There was a lot of controversial stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of breakthroughs. Was, Certainly, people, I'm going to call my sponsor after this. <laughs> people love controversy. Yeah. I don't think it was controversial. Okay, good. Yeah, I thought it was um, being honest. Yeah. Right, yeah. And how I we mean, feel, you know, I mean, it's like, um, you feel it out. Like, I don't have an agenda when I come to this fucking van or this yeah. bus or whatever, whatever it is. You know, I, I just sat here and I go, let's just see what happens. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's... <laughs> Bro, let me ask you something. What? Um, <laughs> let me ask you something. Do you have a girlfriend? No. Right. When's the last time you had a girlfriend? A couple of years ago. Man, but was you, that a nightmare? That was a nightmare. <laughs> oh, really? yeah. But do you do you see girls now? Do you, do you f- uh, I haven't as of lately, just because we've been working a lot. Mm. But, but he fucks. Right. Let me ask you something. If you and I were on, I always ask this. If you and I were shipwrecked on an island. Yeah. Right. And it's a small island. It's maybe like a just half mile you. around. Just you and I. In the center of the island are like a little jungle area, right? Maybe a little hill, right? But around, it's still like a, a lot of beaches, really blue, right? Two months. Two months what? Finish your question? No, no, no. What were you answering? What were you answering? How long would it take for us to bone? Two months? Yeah. Wow, I was going to say year. Year? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm not gay. Yeah, I, I think two months is like, because in the beginning, we're like, we got to build a shelter, you and I, <laughs> right? We gotta figure but out. You'd how... be like winking at me and like and touching me, like, like blowing on me, and like fuck. Dude. I don't know. I, I, I'll do the wings, and I'll do the you know what I mean, or whatever. <laughs> right? But like you know, what I mean, we gotta find fresh water. We're sleeping butt to butt at night. Yeah, yeah. Because well, it gets cold at night. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, the and also the noise. Ooh, well, how did I how did I know <laughs> how did I know you were going there with that question? Is that what you're gonna ask? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby but, giving off some serious Andy Dick vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you and I were on a desert island, it, it would it would take twenty three years. Days. <laughs> <laughs> three days. Three days? <laughs> if that I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think a, a couple of years, you and I. Okay. What about Paul? Because we're friends. <laughs> Six minutes. <laughs> no, I he'd be someone I'd kill. <laughs> Why? Blood, you, and then you, you don't like carnies. Kill no, me just, and then fuck me. He's just got a like a weird vibe about him. You know what I mean? I'd probably kill him. All right. Yeah. But, uh, okay. No, I would not kill you. But um, so you say you said two months. I mean, realistically, probably like a year. That's realistically, right? Yeah. But why would you? Let me ask you this. I know you. Let, why, why would we even have to go there? Because we're sick in the head. I feel like. And it's like on the subject of winking. <clears throat> Yeah, Ian Edwards had the best bit about this. Mm. Right, where he, he was like, uh, you know, he, he said, he was talking about like people who are ugly, and he'd give an example. It'd be like, uh, like the, the the woman who murdered Selena. Yeah. And that, like, you automatically get an image of her, and you're like, ah, that's so funny because, like, yeah. And he's like, was it? I'm, I'm confusing bits. 
Because he said whenever people of two different races have a child, that 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 child is going to be gorgeous. Yeah. Even if the if it's the woman who murdered Selena, and then he had another example. Oh from, right, right. I think it is his bit. Know, yeah, 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 it's yeah. a great bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great bit. But but then someone maybe I just remember there being a bit about someone be like be like you know what like I I I'm not gay. I can tell you right now that I like uh, if you lock me up with the woman who murdered Selena, like. Uh, like I'm, I'm gonna reach a point where it's like, yeah, you know, like I need some pussy. Yeah, yeah. But like at no point, if you lock me up with Brad Pitt, is that gonna happen? Someone had this great comedy bit like that. Yeah, yeah. No, Brad Pitt. Yes, I would. Yeah, I'd oh, fuck yeah. Brad Pitt right away. Brad Pitt. I'd do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd drive I would drive to his house right now. now. I would do it for the story. Yeah. I, I saw him. Uh, <laughs> I would do it. I would do it for the story. <laughs> Before but, we confirmed, it's an island. Even like, it's like <laughs> maybe it's a peninsula. Maybe there's like people. It's like no. Oh just, right, right. We <laughs> land and I and I see a resort. Like, we got a bomb. I don't tell him. Yeah, yeah. You're like, right? <laughs> and I go, we're, we're on a fucking island. He's yeah. like, are you sure? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the four seasons is like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like mile away. We're gonna die. Yeah, we're gonna die. I suck my dad. <laughs> right? He's like, really? Yeah, let's 69. Yeah. And we're on the beach, and then like tourists walk by. Yeah. Well, we're 69. Well, we're 69. <laughs> we're like, oh, damn and he's like, you fucking liar. <laughs> right? Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad. Dude. Blood, blood bless you, man. God bless you. Is God it over? I mean, I don't know. How long does it go to? We do about an hour. What do you think? You do about an hour? Yeah, we do All about right. an hour. Yeah, what do you think? I do what I, uh, whatever the show is. Yeah, yeah I think this, you think it's good? <laughs> I, 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 I think sure, I like it. But Paul always is, is my, you know, because because I'll always assume like, oh, it was awful, this is bad, and then, then Paul says, no, it was good, and I was like, okay, Paul. Is it good? Like, I think it was great. Okay, good. I think it was great. Right. I love this. All right, I have to tell you a story. All right. After nice we story. turn this off. Oh, oh okay. So right, how do we end story. it? How do we end it? Well, dude, I'm, I'm going to listen to a private story now. I so said, thank you, Bob. You turned it off though. Big Bob. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're cut. Go ahead and tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you or did I tell you that that episode was loaded with uh, highly controversial topics, man? Um, I love Bobby Lee. I also love you for sticking around to the very end. And what can I tell you, man? Um, as you're watching this, it will be about 24 hours after I'm talking to you right now. I'll be in Texas surfing at a wave pool in Waco, getting ready to kill it at my first big theater show. And Wendy will be with me, as will Paul Brisky. Yeah. Is your album yet out, Paul? No, it comes out September 16th. So Paul's album comes out September 16th. And if you don't get it on that day, then you're not a real fan. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>